If it's anything to do about getting another job, I've got it all sorted out. I've got it covered. Do you really mean that? Of course I do. Listen, as long as I work here, Monaco has his trust on me. <coughs> oh, good morning, Lucy. Morning, Lucy. Morning. morning. You all know my son, David. He recently graduated from law school. And he's here on the internship. Nice to see you, David. Same here. Congratulations on passing your exams. Thank you. So, what are we working on? Well, I have a lawsuit against press room publications. The hearing is set for next week, but I'm meeting the plaintiff today. I'm working on a custody wrangle, which uh, Renee and I will be going to court to in the next two weeks. And how are you finding our justice system? Interesting. Every day is a new learning opportunity, but so full of surprises, especially in court when you think the case is going in favor of, say, the plaintiff, and it changes. Allow me to say, Renee has been very helpful. She has been assisting when need be, and uh, she's also a very, very fast learner. Hmm. Oh, very well. So, um, it looks like none of you is going to court this week. Well, seems I'll have to show you the ropes myself. So if there's nothing else, I think uh, we're done here. For you, David, I have a lot of work to do. Thanks. That was really sweet. You don't have to mention it. I meant every word I said. Thank you. All right. Um, listen, you don't mind being sweeter than getting me some tea, eh? Right away. You better watch out for that one. I know her type. All innocent on the outside, yet conniving and scheming on the inside. Well, if that's the case, then I guess she just doesn't know what is coming our way. Because when I'm done with her, she won't even know what he does. Have you ever heard of the buttered wife syndrome? Mm -mm, nope. Ellie Libunda was married to Thomas Libunda for over 10 years. There was nothing unusual about their matrimonial home, only... He used to please her. So let me guess, it's your typical kind of case. She wants a divorce. Is that what you call a battered wife syndrome? Suing for damages? Well, that's not the case. As it turns out, it's Nelly Livunda who's been sued by her husband. What? I don't understand. He used to beat her up. Isn't that what you said? Yes. Then on what grounds is he suing? Well, I'll let you have a look for yourself.
Hello. Mm -hmm. Hi. How may I help you? Um, I'm, I'm here to see Mr. Mwako. Oh. Sure. Have a seat. Thank you. Um, who shall I say is here to see him? Oh, um, my name is Nelly. Nelly Livunda. Hmm. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Listen, I thought you were here with your father. Um, yeah, he dumped his file on me and ran out as fast as he could. Really? Yeah. That's strange. Why would he do that? Um, what case are you working on? Well, it's, uh, it's about this lady. Polly, there's a woman at the reception area and she looks kind of lost. So maybe you could help her? Look, let's continue this conversation over lunch hour. It sounds really interesting. Sure thing. Hey, Lily Bunda. It's a pleasure to meet you again. Pleasure too. How are you doing? Well, what can I say? I'm surviving. Please come this way and we can talk more about your situation. <laughs> she did what? Yeah, you can imagine. And the, then what? The poor guy, his life is done, it's finished completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. As in how? You know? He's coming. My son David. And he'll be assisting me in this case. Now, Nelly, before we go into court tomorrow, we want the best of your recollection. An exact detail of what uh, transpired before and on the 11th. You see, Thomas is a good husband. He has always provided for me and the children. But three years ago, he told me to stop working, stay home, and take care of the children. I did. Did you find that a little strange? Mm, no. He, um... You see, Thomas made the rules in the house. And in any case, I was glad to be with the children in the house. Before you got married, I mean, when you were courting, did Thomas also make the rules? Thomas was always sure of what he wanted. And that's one of the reasons why I married him. So, I stayed home, took care of the children, and that's when it all started. Um, it was as if he changed overnight. He started coming home late, often very drunk. He complained and shouted about anything, you know. The children became so scared of him. I didn't know what to do. Is that when he started beating you? He frequented, you know, coming home late, after midnight. I expected me to open the gate, warm his food. Did you, like, ever suspect him of having an affair? Uh, what he means is... It's okay. No. Not then. You see, Thomas is an architect. He has his own firm. And at that point, the firm suffered a major setback. One of his biggest clients pulled out. So, I thought he was under stress. 
But after a year, the farm got back on its feet. Things got back to normal. Only that at home seemed, things seemed to get worse. Out of the few nights he didn't come home, the children and I were happy to enjoy those few moments of peace. Did you try to find help from anywhere? <laughs> I tried to run away, but I missed my children and went back home. At one point, he beat me up when my brother was in town. My brother was so furious after he'd seen what had happened to me. He went to the police station and filed a complaint. Then what happened? When I went to the police, they didn't seem interested. They said they would charge him for disturbance after cutting me the way he did. Eventually, I forgave Thomas. Nelly, did Thomas ever get physical with your children? Yes. My son Samuel. He always tried to protect me. How old is Samuel? Sixteen. He's only a boy. Nelly, would Samuel be willing to testify on your behalf? What? He's only 16. Well, the age doesn't matter. What's important is someone who's lived with you through all this period. All you need is someone who will be there and testify on, on your behalf. So, what do you say? I've managed to write down specific clauses for you to look at. Without you? No, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm, can't do this here. Mark might walk in on us. Oh, don't tell me you're scared of getting caught. That's the least of my worries. Then what? Let's just say. I don't think you've got the guts to do it in the office. Oh. Mm -hmm. You need to get a room. You know what? I think I'll take you up on that offer. What do you want? Come on, can't you just talk without having an argument? I'm listening. Uh, are you free? I'd really like to see you today. Sorry, I'm busy. <laughs> then when won't you be so busy? How about never? Thank you for being open with us. Mr. Marco, just promise me that my Samuel will not be harassed by lawyers in court. He's already gone through so much and... I assure you <laughs> that Samuel and all your witnesses are in good hands. Well, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.
Include Samuel Lipunda among the witnesses. Make a note to share this with the plaintiff's lawyer. Okay. And David, yeah. I'd really appreciate it if you'd keep the details of witnesses to yourself. It's very embarrassing to walk in here and find you laughing with that intern about other people's misfortune. I am very sorry. It will not happen again. Mr. Mako, <clears throat> I can see that your client pleaded not guilty to two counts facing her of uh, attempted murder, contrary to section 203 of the penal code, and assault occasioning grievous bodily harm, contrary to section 234 of the same code. How do you propose to proceed? I had spoken to the prosecutor. We shall both make brief opening statements before commencement. And if it pleases your lordship, we are ready to proceed. You confirm that? Yes, sir. That is so, your honor. <coughs> statements. Your Honor, the complainant, Mr. Thomas Livondo, is an upright citizen and a loving man to his wife and children. Unfortunately, his wife, the accused, Mrs. Nelly Livondo doesn't seem to appreciate his efforts. We shall lead evidence to show that on the 11th day of March this year, the unsuspecting complainant came home only to be accosted by his wife, the accused, who poured boiling water on him. Your Honor, the attack was premeditated, deliberate, callous, and inhuman. Your Honor, the accused found himself in the intensive care unit the next day. Intensive care unit, Your Honor. The man was scalded, and even though he has undergone several operations, they have not been able to treat his condition. Your Honor, it is my intention to prove to this court today that this woman had no other intention other than to kill my client. She did not succeed. We shall adduce evidence to this court to show that the complainant suffered third degree burns to his private parts that have necessitated the removal and relocation of these very vital organs. The defense. Prior to the 11th of March, my client, Mrs. Nelly Libondo, was a loving wife, a mother, and a very devoted Christian. So devoted was she that when she received several beatings from her husband, she, like the Bible says, turned the other cheek. 
What the court shall find is that on the 11th of March, that night, my client snapped. The beatings my client had received from her husband over a period of years had turned her into something that she, to this day, does not understand. Your Honor, in the course of this trial, I will establish that my client, due to the battered wife syndrome, did not understand what she was doing. Neither was she aware it was wrong. The court will take a brief recess of 10 minutes. I need my cup of tea. Battered wife syndrome. Is that the best you could come up with? Excellent opening, Dad. I think we nailed it. <laughs> David, my son, one of the first things you must learn is that you can never be too sure about these things. Great, Dad. Thanks. See you then. Hey, Pauline. Anything for me? Yeah. Actually, there's someone here to see you. Elsie, it's really urgent that we speak. Your Honor, I would like to call Thomas Livundo to the stand. Uh, Your Honor, due to the nature of the complainant's injuries, I would like to request that he, he be seated during the course of these proceedings. Granted. Thank you. I'd like you to hold the Bible with your left hand and put your right hand up. Do you swear by the Almighty God that the evidence you shall give in this court, touching on matters in question, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Mr. Livundo. Yes. Please. Tell the court what happened on the night of March 11th this year. I was with a few friends at a local hotel. Um, when it reached midnight, I decided to go home. Midnight? Isn't that a little bit too long to be away from home? Yes, but I had recently received a contract. And so I was celebrating with a few of my friends. Go on. When I, I arrived at home, my wife nearly opened the gate for me and she let me in. I greeted her but she, she did not respond. Maybe it is because she was so angry that you had come home so late. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. So, you went back home, greeted your wife, she did not respond. Then what happened? She warmed my food and served me dinner. And then I asked her to, to warm water for me because I wanted to have a shower. Did she do it? Yes. And uh, when I arrived at the bathroom, there was hot water in the, in the tub. Then what happened? I entered the tub. And before I could know what was going on, Nelly pulled open the, 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 the bathroom curtains and she poured hot water on me. I am very sorry, Thomas. What happened next? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, maybe I collapsed. I fainted. I, I just woke up the following evening in a hospital bed, sent Harper's hospital. And the doctor said I'd gone through 
several operations that... I'm very sorry. Please, tell the court what the doctor said. He said I had been severely scalded that I'll never function again. I am very sorry. Prior to this incident, what was the nature of your relationship with your wife, the accused? It wasn't cardio, very cardio, I can say. I had been so pushed to the wall that I was contemplating a divorce. Really? So do you think that she did what she did to you because she did not want you to cheat on her with other women? Objection, Your Honor. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you. The defense. Thomas. Yes. Did you at any time in the course of your marriage assault your wife? I was drunk. Is that a yes? You know women sometimes are like children. And they need to be disciplined. I only beat her because I loved her. But I, I don't deserve this. Simple yes will do next time. So when you woke up the next day, did you try to find out who had taken you to hospital? Yes. And who was it? The woman who had tried to kill me the night. Your Honor! It is Nelly! And did you talk to her? No. Have you ever spoken to her? No! I will never talk to her again. Never. She's a mother. I banished her from my life. So after 26 years of marriage, three of which you battered your wife, you still found a way to make your wife and children suffer, even after she took you to hospital. No objection. I have no further questions, Your Honor. What do I have to do to tell you how sorry I am? So I was young and stupid. Elsie, I'm grown up now, and I realize my mistakes. All I want is for me and my son to get close. My three o'clock is about to arrive. I'll call you by the end of the day. Doctor. Yes? Would you say that these injuries seem somewhat premeditated? Like the person who caused them knew exactly what they were doing? Objection, Your Honor. The witness cannot read minds. Oh, Barul, I would like to hear what he has to say. Well, it's difficult to tell whether or not the accused knew exactly what they were doing. But, uh, would you call this an accident? Certainly not. That'll be all, Your Honor. Counsel? Dr. Philip. Yes? Are you aware of the term battered wife syndrome? Yes, I have. Could you please explain to this court its meaning? Battered wife syndrome is a very rare condition, usually experienced by battered women, sometimes battered men. Usually, if a spouse has been hit one time too many, something clicks to their minds, forcing them to retaliate. Often, they have absolutely no recollection of the events whatsoever. Interesting. I have no further questions. Dr. Philip, you may step down. Yes, Your Honor. Any other witness? No, Your Honor. Very well. Defense?
Mrs. Levundo. Yes, my lord. How long were you married to the complainant? We've been married for 26 years. How would you describe your marriage as particularly in the last uh, couple of years? Tough. Go on. My husband changed into, I don't know, a beast and got very violent. Anything small would trigger a beating. I even lost count how many times I was beaten. First with what can only be described as hell on earth. What did you do? Well... Go on. You see, I'm also a Christian. Please, just take your time and try to recall. I was home in bed, reading the Bible. It was after one o'clock in the morning and Thomas hadn't arrived. After a few minutes, I had him moot and I went to open the gate. So what happened next? I warmed his food and gave it to him. Was he drunk? I could smell liquor on him. He hadn't uttered a word to me since he arrived. He, di he didn't look drunk either, but I knew he'd been drinking. And what did he do? He asked me to warm some water. He said he wanted a hot bath. And he also asked me to, to prepare myself. Meaning he wanted to... He always joked that he wanted hot food, a hot bath, and a hot woman when he got home. <laughs> I was, Silence in court? I was never amused by that. So you warmed his water? Yes. Then what happened? I took it to the bathroom. And where was he at this point? Thomas was in the bathroom waiting for me to take his water. And then what happened next? So, Nelly, what did you do next? I don't know. I can't remember anything else. Nelly, do you understand the reasons why your husband is suing you? He says that I poured boiling water on him. Did you listen to his testimony? Thomas Livondo says that he cannot perform because of the injury. I know, I know. It must have been the devil. I love my husband. I couldn't have done anything to hurt him. Are you saying that despite the injuries inflicted on you and your children, you would still want to live with this man? I know every family has its problems. I'm not perfect. 
My husband isn't perfect, but I love him, and his children love him. Nelly, you understand that your husband is not able to perform with you because of the... I know, but as a Christian woman, I will stand by his side no matter what. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Salala, up, up, Mama, I'm from Zazi. Joe, go behind your mama, Mr. Mark, are Mr. Mark, are you? Skiza, Ambrose. Ah, no, no, no way. Skiza. No way. I see my mama, Skiza. The two of you, what will you need? To talk to an officer, Skiza, Ambrose. Ambrose. Ambrose, Ambrose, Skiza. You've got to do. You've, you've got to do something. I just can't lose my job. So, let me get this straight. When you found out that your husband was cheating on you with another woman, you decided to do something about it. Objection. Please answer the question. I prayed for him. I prayed for him every night that he could come home. Nelly, if your husband was mistreating you so badly, why didn't you leave? I was in a big dilemma. If I decided to stay, I could probably get killed. And even if I decided to leave, where would I go? What would happen to my children? My parents are both dead, and I don't even have money of my own. So where are you living now? My church got me a place to stay. So on the material night, before your husband came home, what were you doing? Before? I can't remember. But I think I was just reading a book in bed. You can't remember or you don't want to remember? What do you want me to say? The truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Let me refresh your memory. Your husband came home. Yes. You gave him something to eat. Yes. You went ahead and fixed water for his bath. Yes. In the tub, correct? Yes. So, where did you get this boiling water that you used to harm him so cruelly? Please, just answer the question. I don't know. I, I can't remember that part. How convenient. I put it to you that you sat at home, boiling that water, waiting for your husband to come back home so that you could harm him like you intended. That is not true. I have no further questions for this witness, Yoma. The defense calls upon Samuel Legundo. You will swear by the Bible. Please put your one hand up, right hand up. Do you swear by the Almighty God that the evidence you shall provide to this court on matters relating to the question is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? I do. Samuel, please state your relationship between the accused and the plaintiff. They are my parents. And uh, do you know why you're here? Yes, I do. And that is? <clears throat> to speak the truth about what happened. Good. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Samuel, how was it like living on a daily basis with both your parents, your father and your mother? Everything was cool. Until the day I turned 13, I remember my father wasn't there on my birthday. When he came home that night, I heard a lot of yelling and shouting. 
When I went to check what was wrong, I saw my father hit my mother many times. I'm sorry you had to witness that. Did that happen ever again? Yes, a lot. That's not all. It got worse. Until after a while, we all got used to it. So what did you do? Once, I tried to defend my mother. But my dad hit me across the face. I fell down and hit my head on the bed. I had to receive stitches from the hospital. My mom told me to lie and say I was in an accident at school. And did you lie? At first, I wasn't going to lie. But when she told me that the police would question both her and my father, I lied. I have no further questions for this witness, my lord. Cross-examination. <clears throat> so, you've lied before for your mother. How do we know you're not lying now? Objection! No further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Samuel, you may step down. The defense would like to call upon Jane Kamau. I'm Jane Kamau. I'm a social director at Hope Women's Hospital and I'm a clinical psychologist by profession. Do you recall the events of the 4th of February relating to this case? Yes, my lord. Mrs. Livondo there walked into a hospital accompanied by a young man, um, his son, I believe. And uh, what time was that? It was around 5.30 p.m. What was her condition? Like most women who were battered, she turned up at our hospital with her face swollen and her clothes were tattered and torn to shreds. Well, she was hiding that with a lasso. She also had blood trickling from her mouth and, and she was weeping. Then what transpired? I got the case story over a period of, of 90 minutes or so between sobs that her husband had repeatedly beaten her up. What happened next? I had her checked. Her body bore a testimony of the brutal life she had lived. I was shown several scars consistent with the history of the relentless physical abuse. I recommended counseling and advised her to report the matter to the police. She appeared depressed. I understand she did, but she later dropped the charges. Do you always advise clients who come to you to divorce their husbands? No, that is not true. The decision is always with the woman. You'll be surprised that although they're, they're being mistreated or abused, they're still with their husbands and they're still tied up into their miserable marriage. I mean, divorce is not an option for them. Why do you say that? For them, divorce, it's foreign. It is culturally unacceptable and sometimes it's impractical. And for the religious, they find it contrary to their faith. That is a catch-22 situation. I couldn't have put it better. Battered women deal with it differently, but most gradually lose their sense of dignity. They eventually have long-term negative implications. This may include unstable mental conditions and hormonal imbalance, and some may even suffer functional amnesia. I have no further question for this witness, my lord. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Just a few questions. So, what are the causes of beatings if they happen? It is a fact they do happen. And the causes range from questioning of suspicious husbands. Are you trying to suggest that uh, men are not on the receiving end? I did not suggest anything like that. Men also suffer domestic violence, but in most cases, women do. Are you married? Is that of any relevance to you? Please, uh, you will answer questions as they're put to you. I'll do the asking for today. Now, are you married? 
No. Have you ever been married? Yes. And? We divorced. I divorced him. So, you're a divorcee? I'm not ashamed of that. Yes, I'm a divorcee. I'd better be alone than to be in an abusive relationship. I don't remember asking you a question. But is that the kind of venom you preach to people's wives when they come to you for counseling? I have no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. The court is adjourned until tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Silence. Now let me hear your closing statements. Your Honor, we have heard about Mrs. Nelly Livunda being the victim of domestic abuse. <laughs> the defense even brought their only son to testify on her behalf. We have also heard that this very boy has lied once before in order to protect his mother. So, how sure are we that he wouldn't do it again? Your Honor, we have also heard about Thomas Livunda, a man who worked hard to provide for his family. His only crime was cheating on his wife. Your Honor, when Nelly Livunda found out that her husband was seeing another woman, she schemed a plot that would leave him damaged for life. And when the police went looking for her, she claimed that she could not remember anything in regards to the concerned night. Your Honor, this is a clear case of selective amnesia. Your Honor, this woman should be locked away for life and the keys thrown away because she is not fit to live in civilized society. Your Honor, I urge you to find that Thomas Livunda is the only person who was battered in this family. Counsel? Who is the battered one in this family? Is it the woman who night after night received a beating from her husband? Or the husband who told this court that he's seeing another woman? Or is it the man who struck his own son and expected everyone to be at his beck and call? Your Honor, wife battering is a shameful act which could have long-term physical and psychological implications. We have all had the doctor's testimony about battered wife syndrome. All we ask is for you to help stop the suffering this woman has undergone and to help her heal. My client is a hard-working woman who loves her family and her husband deeply. She was pushed beyond human endurance and snapped. It was not her act. It was not her act. Shika, and whatever you saw here is only between you and the parties involved, all right? Nee, Shika. Nee, nee, nee. Where's the bribe? Akia Mogu, where's the bribe? Nee, nee, nee. Where's the bribe? Akia Mogu. Shika. Shika. Akia Mogu, Tena. Mako Hata Yuakito. This case has not been easy to decide, and not without good reasons. Women 
are increasingly becoming victims of retrogressive male-centric social order. And listening to this case, it is evident that women have been let down by everyone. The judiciary, the administration, the police, and even their very own families. However, no one should take the law into their own hands. But having said that, this court has persuaded that the defense of the battered wife syndrome raised by the accused person carries the day. The accused is therefore acquitted of the charges against her. At the time of committing the offense, the accused did not know what she was doing. I'm not without sympathy to the complainant, but my hands are tied. Awesome, Dad. Awesome. Congratulations. Here's a manual.